Hello everyone, uh, it's nice to create this video. I'm back with uh, creating a video for machine learning engineers. So this video is a very short video to explain uh, a machine learning engineers, how do they really deploy a web application over the models that they're going to build. So I'm making this uh, a very crisp video so that people understand taking uh, one machine learning model and uh, you know how do I put it on a web and so that I want to really see how end users uh, play with the models that we are going to build day in day out. As a data scientist or a data machine learning engineer, I'm sure, uh, I'm assuming that you know the basics of machine learning and you know how to build a model. Uh, I, I'm not going to go into technical details of what is model, et cetera, et cetera. But as, I'm assuming that if you're aware of how to build a model, this video will help you to you know, uh, create a simple, very simple web application uh, which, which, which actually creates a sense that how end users can actually make use of the models that we are building in the background. I'm sure uh, from whatever I have seen so far, like most of the machine learning engineers would be concentrating uh, on building a very efficient model in the background, but there would be a special team who will deploy the model results into a web application and will be uh, user facing. Uh, but as a, what I feel as a data scientist or a machine learning engineer is like, if I, if I can really sense how my models are being utilized by the end user, that gives me more confidence and uh, can think through much more that I can, um, you know, uh, add into my skill set as well, right? So that's the basic agenda of this particular short video. So I assume that you guys know a bit of uh, machine learning things like I will only use um, a simple multiple linear regression model here. And I assume you know a bit of Python coding, but you know, I'll take you through the code that I have for you. And I assume that you also have a bit of HTML coding. I'm sure if you are a computer science engineer, you would have drawn a very basic fundamental HTML page like home.html sometime long, long back. I'm going to take these three as my, you know, uh, technologies, uh, and I'm going to create a very simple web application with the dummy data that I have got from the web, and see how an end user, like end user, uh, by giving an input to the data uh, to the model, how is that, you know, the model gives the predicted output so that the end user consumes it, right? That's the motto of this session. So let me quickly take you through the code directly, uh, and then you know uh, I'll take you all of these steps from there. So as a machine learning uh, engineer, the first thing that I would like to have in my model is this, right? So this is my uh, model uh, that you're seeing, and I basically use a PyCharm a lot. This is a PyCharm IDE tool. So uh, inside my PyCharm, I code a lot. So this is my Python code, right? So I have my Python code. The first block of the Python code is to import everything that I need. So sklearn is something that in which I have the linear regression model building packages. So I'm importing that. And Flask is uh, something, a framework inside the Python, which enables a web application frameworks, right? It, uh, it, is, it is not as popular as Zango in uh, Python, but it's good enough for us to learn how web applications are looking like. And, most of the applications and most of the uh, companies still use, uh, if they want to code everything, a web application on Python, still they use Flask. So, and then Pandas is to just re, uh, deal with the data frame, okay? So I have two major functions here. So one is called model and another one is predict. So the model is the one that is going to build a model for me and return the values that I'm really interested for, okay? So I'll take you through the data set. So you see the two data sets here, right? Basketball.xlsx and uh, basketball2. So the reason why basket, there are two files, uh, I'll tell you that. Uh, you know, as a machine learning engineer, there will be a continuous administration activity that you are going to do on a model, which means that uh, today if model is performing 90% good, tomorrow when you have a new data set coming into the database, you would again try to rebuild the model and see how your efficiency is increasing, right? So building just a model is not you know, enough for a data scientist. They will also be responsible for uh, continuously administering it, improving it with the new data that is coming in or with the new technologies that are coming in, 
right? So that's the reason to take that as one of the examples. I have split the data into two sections. One is this file, which is the first file uh, that has got only 40 records. The second is this file, which has got 54 records. So I'm going to just tell you, right, you know, in case if there is a new data coming in, how can the current web application can be independent of the new data that is coming in? That was the main intention of splitting these two files. So with this example, we are not just going to see how to build an application over the model, but we are also going to get a sense of how the model can be independent. I'm sorry, how the web application can be independent of model changes. Okay, so that's the main intention. There are two learnings from it. So how do I build a basic web application? And also the second piece is how can I make it automatable so that the web application doesn't have any changes. The only the results are very new and fresh from my model that I'm going to tune it in the background. Right, that's the takeaway. Okay, so this is my model, which is like, you see, I'm not going to take you through this code because it is pure Python code, but I'll take you through the data. So what I'm trying to convey. So the data is like this, uh, for a given basketball day, you know, player's data, for a height, given height, the weight of the uh, player, and how much of success field goals he has got, and how much of success free throws he has got. Basis on this, if I have to predict how many average points he is going to you know, uh, get it for the team. If this is my Y variable, and I have to do a regression on these four variables, how do I do it? That's what it is. So in case if you want to go through in detail of this uh, description of each column, I have that in the second sheet called as data description. You can go through that here, all right? So that's what it is. And I have picked this data from one of the websites. The sources is there in my blog. So you can also refer that and see, you know, if you can get any other data sets for learning purposes. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to the next uh, function called predict. So predict is a function that basically takes the input from the web application and runs this particular predict function to go and include the inputs into this model and give me the output of the model. Right. So the output will give you like for a given height, of a new player uh, for his weight and for whatever field success percentage he has got and whatever free success percentage he has got, what is the predicted score according to the model that I have built? So predict is the one that will take the input from the web application and then it will also throw the output saying that I'm predicting that this player of these attributes will score so and so average on an, on an average in the next coming match or something like that. So to do this, you have also you know, observed that there are a couple of HTML files. One is home.html file, and another one is predict.html file. So I'll take you through those things. So the home.html file has nothing but input fields. It's like a form where you give an input of what is the height of the player, what is the weight of the player, uh, what is the field success percentage, free success percentage, etc., and then click on a submit button. As soon as you know, he clicks on the submit button, I have written a code here, right? So the submit button will render, it's a post form. So whenever somebody clicks a submit button, he comes into the, this predict is a function that will execute, okay? And it will execute this predict function and then all the uh, forms that the user has built in the home will be taken as an input. And this input is passed as a input to the uh, model that I have built here. And it will predict the value for me and that predicted value will be given as the output to the end user. This is as simple as that. So now let me show you that. Uh, so predict.html looks like this. It's exactly, you know, uh, draw the table basis on the output that I have got. So it's a very, very simple, basic HTML that I have written. All right, so let me do that. So if you might have a question, but uh, like how someone, after clicking a submit icon on uh, the home page, how can, this be triggered how can this function runs i have coded it in home.html if you have seen so i said that when someone clicks on the submit button go and run this function so this function is coded here in the main dot uh, py so someone who uh, clicks on this you have to go and run this function that's how it is taken here all right so let me uh, you know quickly you know uh, run this one so Get me a Python console and I will execute this space. So run this space. You see the Python console here. Uh, so it has started. 
okay so this is my web application that has started so now let me show you this all right so if i have to show you this see here this is a web application as simple as that now uh, my model is ready the model has been built and then you know uh, the model is telling me that um, i'm sorry for that like, yeah the model is telling me uh, the model has been built in the background now it is asking the end user now give me inputs for the new row i'll predict what will be his average score so i know this is how the model is looking like so uh, somewhere between 6 and 7 feet is the height that i can pass in so i'll give that height so somewhere at 7 and the weight range is between 180 to 250 or something so that's fine so i'm saying my weight of the uh, player is around 220 pounds and then the field success percentage is somewhere around 40% to 50% so uh, i'm just making sure that i give a uh, numbers very close to what the actual data is so that uh, the prediction will you know make sense at least so 0.6 if this is a good player and three success percentage is 0.8 or something now i'm saying predict see the beauty this is how the prediction results look like so for a given data i'm saying now right you know um, for the height of 7 feet for the given weight of 220 pounds and the field success of 0.6 and three success of 0.8 this player would on an average score 21 points in the game all right this is what you know i wanted to take you through to uh, you know uh, through this video so that you understand in the background whatever models we are going to build you know it can come up as a very good important uh, you know application or a use case for the end users like this all right so the other piece that i wanted to cover is how i can make this automatable you see that now uh, for the same data set right so let me make a note 7 220.6 and 0.8 now what i would do is i would go to my application and i would change something like this right so i would say instead of model 1 i would just say model 2 why model 2 if i just say model 2 and rerun my web application that's it i'm not rerunning anything when i say model 2 it will pick this file as an input file that means my model will change now if i say 2 and if i save it right now i would see you know my web service is being restarted or not if not i would you know i would like to stop this right and i would like to stop this model uh, sorry python and i wanted to trigger it again right i did not do any changes to the web application right i just changed an input so that it has to uh, take the new data not just the old data that means there is an improvisation in the model that is what i wanted to convey now if i go to my sheet and then i would go to the home sheet not the predict sheet now it's a new thing now this is this will take a uh, now i think you might have remembered the output is 21 point change earlier now let me give the same input right point uh, 6 here and point 8 here now let's see the output output should be different see now it is saying 18.25 that means the model has changed why the model has changed because the new data has been added adding new data is one of the reasons why model has to change but in real time there might be multiple reasons why model should be changing day in day out it might be improvisation in the loss functions it might be improvisation in the uh, you know new techniques that you have used uh, new transformations that you wanted to make on the data etc etc but if you have seen i did not do any changes to my web application application remains the same you change the model and in the front end end user doesn't know it at all that the model has changed that's the reason the name or the title of this blog is something like build an automated simple web application a machine learning web application especially all right so that is what i wanted to show you uh, in this video guys thanks for watching this video if you like it please uh, you know click on the like button and also subscribe to my channel there are more such you know uh, uh video is going to come for the data scientists or machine learning engineers uh you know uh, with respect to the other technologies or other things that we can learn all right so before i conclude this session i would like to tell you that in case if you want to play with this code you want the code and the data it is available in this uh, you know blog this is public this is my uh, github location you can download it from here just click on this and download as a zip and play with the code i'm okay with it okay so how to run the code and the description of the uh, application is also given here 
and you can uh, make a take a look at it and the data is downloaded from this location i'm thankful for them so just to give you an example i downloaded this data and in case if you are worrying about how do i get this github location it is on my blog so you can navigate to the oscar.com website and you will find the blog on the same article yeah please go and download it and uh, play with it all right okay uh, thank you guys this is what i wanted to take you guys through um, i hope it it's uh, it added something new to you uh, i hope that all right thank you